This time I'll be introducing the all metal, all new IG-11 kit, nice 3D model, from the nice folks at the Metal Earth Company. Now if you're a Star Wars fan in particular, if you've been watching the Mandalorian series, you know the IG-11 machine. Pretty cool, huh? This is a 3D kit, all metal, made out of steel, that you take flat sheets of parts and make them into these 3D models. There's a whole series that you can get, including the Mandalorian and the Razor Crest. What's interesting about these models is you don't glue them together. They have a unique tab and slot system. Put the tab in, you either push it over or you turn it sideways. Now there's so many parts you got to keep track of the register that tell you where everything are. And of course there's tons of directions. What's interesting about these directions is there are very few words. It's just pictures. But if you do see any words, make sure to follow what they tell you. And this is what the parts look like when they come. There are these flat sheets of cut out metal. It's steel. And they're exquisitely painted. Of course you're going to need some tools as you see none of these tools cost me anything these are just different things that I had laying around because you're going to be taking those flat sheets and making them into different shapes now I did just recently find this set of tools that are specifically designed for these 3d metal kits now you never want to break these parts off you want to make sure to use sharp nippers because you will destroy the parts if you try to break them off the backing you also need to really keep track of what you have and have not used as you cut them out. Now sometimes you're going to want to use certain tools and sometimes you're going to want to use other tools. This is kind of something that you have to learn what will fit and what doesn't. The way you build these kits is you simply put one part on and then another part on top of that and another part on top of that. Each small individual part does not have to be perfect, it just has to be pretty good. Now sometimes I like to use one tool to bend them over and a different tool to twist them and so this is once again something that you'll learn. Now some of the tools just won't work. If you look at this one, if I had used this long tool to bend it, I would have bent the part at the top which was not designed to be bent. And other tools like these round ones, man they just work so good. You got to be able to get these shapes to what the eventually gonna have to look like and see how nice and round it makes this one so that's a perfect tool for this particular application and before long you have a whole pile of bits and pieces and from here we just keep putting them together and putting them together what do you think what good fun well moving right along as I mentioned earlier these kits are just making one piece and put it on make the next put it on stacking one on top of the other it's really easy well, let me show you one of the more difficult parts. This is one that really requires some work to get a 3D aspect to it. And here's what the part looks like when it comes off the backing. It's just this flat piece of metal, kind of an interesting shape. Now I used my broom handle to get started. Sometimes I can use the other parts. Sometimes I use these basic parts to get it originally moving in the right direction. And then these new stainless steel tools that I have work just fine to get the rest of the shaping. And there it is. What do you think of that? Pretty cool out of a flat piece of metal, if you ask me. That's why these kits are so much fun. You're making something out of very little of nothing. Now, as I said, everything goes together one piece right on top of the other. So let's put that on. And these, this particular tool, the long skinny one, is really good for reaching into those spots that are almost impossible to get to any other way. And here's another spot that it's getting into that I would have a difficult time to take that tab and close it off. Once again, we're putting more parts together, just one on top of the other. You do have to be very careful about orientation because sometimes if you're not real careful, you can get them in the wrong direction and then it doesn't work. And then this is another piece and then here goes the top of the piece on there. So it's going together in a hurry here. And of course, it's time for the foot. That's always a good sign when you're putting the foot on. And here you have, well, one leg. I guess it's time to build the other one. So I better get on it. <clears throat> of course, the second leg goes together just like the first leg. And then we put it together there on the stand and also the pelvic girdle. 
very attentive to putting the girdle together there. You want to make sure it's good and tight so the rest of the structure is solid. It's time to start putting together the upper torso and I must admit I almost put it together backwards. So just be real careful about where things go and before you know it, you have a whole bunch of sub-assemblies ready to go. That's what's fun about this particular model is it's like you're building a bunch of individual small models and putting them together. And here we are working with the stuff in the back there. Once again, make sure everything's good and tight when you first put it together because you'll never be able to get back inside to tighten these little pins up if you don't have them correct. It's time to start putting the torso together and once again make sure everything's good and tight. Putting all of these sub-assemblies together is always fun. All of a sudden things just start looking better. And here's the upper section of the torso. Once again, I almost put it on backwards, so I had to stop and think about it. Well, here we go. There's the front of it. The IG-11 is almost starting to look like something, and here's the back of it with most of the torso together. Well, moving right along, it's time to do the top knot, or the head. All of these 3D metal kits have some kind of a helmet or head, and you really have to take your time with them. These new little tools that I showed you earlier are really good for some of this specialty bending to get the exact shape you want. Look at how nice that cone came out there. Yeah, I like it. I wish I would have had the this little set long ago. Of course, the cone goes on the top of the head, which is actually starting to look like something. I did figure out late in the game that a lot of times you can bend these pins quite nicely by using the side of this pencil tool rather than the end of it. Now there's very few words and once in a while there'll be something like this, the finger. Whenever you see a word or any specific direction, make sure that you put it exactly the way they're showing it. That's really something important. And now we have another pile of sub-assemblies. Oh man, let's put them together. Now look at this. This is always a good sign See how there's very few parts left. Mm -hmm. That means we're moving right along on our project. And I just love this. When the parts list page, man, you can't find anything left on it. Yeah, that means we're moving along nicely. Okay, of course, the next thing you want to do is start putting together the head assembly, which all of a sudden it just looks like stuff. And oh, look at that. We now have another pile of some assemblies. That's so much fun doing this. Now I did have a little bit of a, a run-in with putting the head on, so just make sure it stays on good and tight. I must admit that I did have a little trouble putting the shoulder units on the torso. You have to really work with them and push them and bend them and make them fit. You gotta be tougher than they are. And here's the rest of the shoulder unit going together. All of a sudden things are starting, well, to look like something. And here's the upper torso going on to the lower torso. Make sure you have the right orientation as far as front and back goes. What does happen once in a while is on some of the parts, the paint will goo into the holes and you have to open them up. A little sharp hobby knife takes good care of that. And then all of a sudden you just have more bits and pieces, more sub-assemblies, time to put them together. I must admit that on some of the parts, I do use just a little bit of super glue. Usually they will stay together fine just with the tabs, but with a little bit of glue it firms them up so they don't flop around. Usually I follow the directions exactly, but sometimes I kind of go out of order. They wanted these bandoleros put on after the arms were put on. I didn't like that idea. I put it on first. Of course, the arms go together just like little legs did. You make one little sub-assembly and put it on top of another one and put it on top of another one. Now, these little tiny areas that go together like this, this is where I sometimes add just a little bit of glue. It just holds them more sturdy than just the tabs. And then all of a sudden, you've got more sub-assemblies. We've got two arms left, and we're almost done. Of course, we want to put the armament in the hands. Got to have some guns going on here. And once again, I did use a little spot of glue. Be careful about putting the arms on. There's a very distinctive orientation that they go on, and you can actually put them on differently if you want. 
And here's the second arm going on in place. You don't have to have it exactly the way that the picture on the container is, but that's what I chose to do. So what do you think? How'd it come out? I think it came out pretty darn fun. Look at that. From flat metal sheets to these wonderful 3D models. And look at the detail on this IG-11. It is by far the most complex, most difficult, but most satisfying one of these 3D puzzles, you can call them, or kits, or whatever you want to call them. And boy, this one came out just wonderful. Just came out great. And here he is. Take a good look. If you guys want a fun thing to do, you should look into these Metal Earth Company kits. They're the best. Go and have a look at these Metal Earth kits around on Amazon. You'll find all different kinds. And certainly come back and join me again another time. I always like to see what you guys are doing, so send in your stuff too. See you guys. Bye.